This is the weekly economic and market update for the week ending November 4th and a look forward to the week of November 7th. And this week I want to start with uh, something I've been seeing a lot on uh, television, on uh, articles written about it, videos on it, and that is this uh, diesel shortage uh, that's out there. And I'm going to tell you right from the beginning, uh, it's the inventory is lower, but I'm not quite sure uh, whether we're in dire straits or not. I know some of the reports are out there, uh, but I, a lot of misleading information that's out there uh, as far as the actual data goes. I'll get to that in a, to just a second. But most of the articles that I've read have been about the uh, diesel shortage um, and, you know, diesel affects a lot of different things, affects transportation, affects heating, affects food, you know, and a shortage of diesel could actually lose, you know, lead to a supply chain collapse. Now, the cause is, um, has somewhat been identified as refiners, uh, it went bust during the um, COVID lockdowns, and um, there was been no new reinvestment. The Russia sanctions, where the, we used to get some of the diesel fuel from uh, Russia, so that that's those are some of the causes of it. Um, and then uh, you know, with that, the price of uh, diesel has gone up significantly and continues to go up. And uh, the inflation then goes up also. <laughs> so, you know, this all figures in because, again, it affects food, it affects heating, it affects transportation. So all of these things are, are being affected. So regardless of whether we actually have a shortage or not, we are seeing price increases, and that's verifiable data uh, there. Um, so, so one of the things I constantly have told people, uh, friends, um, acquaintances is, you know, just be prepared. Uh, I don't know that this is going to turn into anything. Um, but, uh, I think it's always a wise idea for people to have six months of food on hand. Um, and if you need diesel, you know, supply, you know, put it in inventory. Um, it's not something I w need to do, but it, something if you use it in your to heat your home or whatever uh, but here's the th here's the thing that uh, is a bit confusing to me so the first thing I go to when somebody says we have a shortage is okay so what is our production and what is our co consumption and this is where it got really hairy um, you can see from this chart that we have uh, four million uh, barrels a day that we're using of distillate fuel, which is diesel. Um, and that was the first piece of data I, I, I came to. But if you look at the, when I did the search, um, it was saying that we uh, produce 1.63 million uh, uh, barrels a day and we consume 1.42, which is a far cry from the 4.02 that's out there. So I don't understand the difference. And when I looked at other data, it just got more confusing. So I, you know, it, it's a matter of the, the rate. So if we've got 25 days left, the, the, the question becomes how fast are we using that 25 days of supply? Considering that we're uh, consuming some, but we're also producing some or importing some from other places. And so the numbers that I saw were so different that I never came to a final conclusion on that, something I'll work on between uh, now and next week. But it's significant enough if anytime there's uh, something that could potentially affect your ability to stay warm or to eat, um, then I, I think it's something that I should bring people's attention to. And... You know, some people are saying it's misinformation. Some people are saying, no, this is real. Uh, I do know that, 
you know, we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot with regards to uh, energy policy, which I've noted, you know, throughout. Um, so that that was the first thing I wanted to cover right out the gate, uh, because you may have heard something about it, but, um, you know, I, I'm not in the camp of that it's not a problem, but I'm not in the camp that it is a severe problem. Um, but again, I, I think it's a wise idea to keep six months of food on hand no matter what, especially if you got, you know, Putin over there with his nuclears threatening, threatening things. And, you know, we've had shortages of other things. Uh, you're going back to COVID, toilet paper and, you know, a number of other items and baby formula and, you know, just <laughs> it, it, it's in the realm of possibility. So just put it on your radar and I'll see if I can find uh, more definitive data between now and next week. Um, investor survey. Uh, it, things, in, you know, people are getting less bearish now. Uh, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I prefer people to be more bearish, to look for the market to go up. Um, but right now it's in kind of neutral territory here. We stand at 32.9%. Now that's a far cry from the 60.9% we had not too long ago. Um, back probably around, what? Oh, well, I'm trying to think. People got bearish right after... Uh, uh, things started to go up and then the Fed did crazy things and everything. So probably back in June or July um, is where we hit that 60.9% uh, bearish mark. So anyway, that I, that was uh, something I, I, I pay attention to because sentiment is a big deal of investing and trading. Um, Fear and greed index, another one. You know, now we're in greed territory now. Just not too long ago, we were like at uh, 19, extreme fear, and then all of a sudden we've gone to greed. Uh, and today is Friday, the uh, November 4th, and, you know, the market went up 500 points or so, went down, and then we were in the red for a while. I think it went down 100 or 200 points, and then we finished up 400 points. So this is just kind of the volatility that we're seeing in the market. Uh, but people seem to be greedy despite the fact that the FOMC or the Fed came out and raised uh, interest rates three quarters of a point. And then obviously the rates went up and that kind of caused the uh, market to go down because things like mortgages and all of that go up. So uh, it's interesting times right now as far as people's uh, sway of, you know, whether they're in fear or greed, uh, but they are indicators that, that, that I keep track of. Um, economic calendar, and I want to start with, uh, well, let's, we can cover the um, manufacturing PMI. Uh, that was reported on Tuesday this week. And, you know, it continues to go down. Now, it beat the consensus, consensus estimate, but we're still down seven tenths of a point from what it was in the previous um, month. And so we got from 50.9 down to 50.2. So, you know, things are uh, reacting the way, um, you know, the Fed uh, wants them to in order to... Uh, you know, cool off the economy. And uh, now this is something that's interesting with regard to the number that came out on our farm payroll. And I want to spend a little bit of time on this uh, because it was such, I came across such a, a very interesting article from Zero Hedge about the number. Um, and, you know, the non-farm payrolls were, uh, 261,000 new, you know, uh, new, new, basically new jobs. Um, and the, I was looking through here, where we, you know, 263 last month, 261 this month. And the article that I read from Zero Hedge, it's worthy of a read. I'll certainly put a link into it, but, you know, it talks about, you know how the numbers are come up, come up with, and that there's this disparity between what's called the establishment survey and the household survey. Where the establishment survey will say, since 
you know, March of 2022, earlier this year, that we created non-far payroll jobs of two point, you know, uh, two million four hundred fifty-two thousand basically jobs. But the household survey is one hundred fifty thousand, and what Zero Hedge noticed in this is we get this gap. You know, something happens <laughs> here, and we have a two point three million uh, job disparity. Now, how could that be? Now, I know they adjust from month to month, uh, these numbers, but that's that's significant. And then they took a, now this is maybe conspiracy theory here, but um, sometimes it turned out to be true, you know, like Wuhan. Um, and, uh, you know, look what happened right before uh, the election for Ob Obama's second term. Wow. Look how great the jobs were, but the disparity between the two. Are we over-reporting the number of jobs? Uh, uh, very well could be. And is it being done for nefarious purposes? Hey, in this environment, it could be. Uh, Trump versus uh, Hillary uh, back in 2016. Again, a huge disparity uh, started to develop before the election. So, you know, there, there's something strange going on with these workforce numbers. Now, Zero Hedge, uh, you know, is one of those that that looks for these types of things. And whether, you know, this is something you can ignore or not, I'm not sure. Um, but it seemed, does seem strange that right before elections, we get these huge disparities in, in the number of jobs uh, that we have out there. So anyway, I put a link to this article. And if you're interested in this type of thing, there are actually several articles. They've been reporting on this for probably the last four months. I just decided to... Uh, uh, say something about it this month but um, regardless the number of jobs is going down are they over reporting jobs um, the BLS uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics you wouldn't think so but uh, like I said I, I don't <laughs> put anything out of uh, the, po the realm of possibility these days okay and uh, so what's I think those were probably the two major numbers. Let's look at uh, what we have coming up. Oh, before I do that, one thing that drove the market too, I wanted to just show this, is the DXY, which is the dollar index. You know, and it's been going up, you know, pretty steadily, you know, from in the 90s. Now we're up, uh, it got as high as 100, 114. Uh, it dropped $2 today, which one of the reasons that the market recovered but look at i mean that's a pretty significant drop in one day i just want to make note of that if these consider if, if the dollar continues to weaken it's kind of a double-edged sword it's going to allow the markets to go up but it's going to make things more expensive because a weaker dollar makes items we import uh, more expensive so uh, it's just something something to keep an eye on uh, as we move forward Okay, so let's take a look at uh, next week. And, you know, really, uh, the, you know, the major thing is going to be the CPI on Thursday. That'll be a market mover, um, you know, with, you know, expectations uh, of 6.5%, uh, which isn't much movement in the uh, inflation rate, uh, the consumer price index. Uh, if it's something significant lower than that, the markets go nuts. Uh, if not, then you can plan on the Fed coming out and saying how they're going to keep raising rates uh, at, at a uh, breakneck speed. Uh, and, you know, it might. Uh, be low a lot lower i keep looking for a number that's significant low si significantly lower but by next thursday all the reasons for the fed to potentially uh pause or do something have really gone out the window at this point now that they've already met and raised uh, the fed funds rate to three by three quarters of a percent so we'll look and see what happens uh with the cpi as it pretty much moves with the PCE um, 
uh, personal consumption expenditures, which is what the Fed uh, looks at, or at least the core of that. Um, that so that's that's really the, really the only major thing. If I see something significant come up, I'll report on it uh, next week. Now, my final comments is going to be very short. It's kind of something I posted on uh, Twitter, uh, which is you know the Fed is taking this mentality of oh you know we'll. Uh, uh, just keep raising rates at uh, three quarters of a point and uh, you know we raising them fast is a good thing and you know that will uh, allow us to get inflation under control well <laughs> I kind of compared it to you know my thinking at Thanksgiving is well I'll just put the turkey in the oven at 600 degrees so it'll cook faster and so that's what I tweeted this week. And I just, I, you, know, you know, it's not, you can't, can you recover from a burnt turkey? No, you have to cook, cook a new one. Well, we don't have a new economy that we can put out there. So the, kind of this rush to get inflation under control when they've already missed opportunities for the last 15 years is just going to cause uh, the turkey to burn in this case. And I think the turkeys that are going to be burning at least next Tuesday are going to be the uh, party of spending. And also uh, a little bit later, it's going, I think uh, uh, Jerome Powell, you know, chairman of the Fed, I think his turkey is uh, burnt. And so that's really my commentary for this week. And uh, just remember, there is always a better way.